Welcome back to our channel, Coral Jacks. In this video, we'll be exploring the pair of dolmens in Dovrinar Didwi, a small village in Gwynedd nestled on the west facing slopes of Moilvra in southwestern Snowdonia. Easily found and accessed, being located just off the main coastal road from Harlick to Barmouth, there's a free car park nearby and small brown sign directs you up the correct lane. In our previous couple of videos, we explored two other sites within five miles of here, Gwen Aignon and Corsa Gedol. We visit a lot of Neolithic sites on our channel, but this is the first to feature a pair, two cromlechs standing together. Although there are plenty of examples from across the globe, it's an uncommon occurrence in Wales. But why is that? Well, in several of the old books that we've read while researching this series, the authors have written of sites like these being excavated with shockingly little care and sometimes excavated while in the process of being dismantled by landowners who wanted to repurpose the stones or for various reasons simply did not want the monument in their field any longer. One such author is Richard Fenton, an antiquarian who lived between 1747 and 1821. He is often criticised for leaving dolmen sites poorly reassembled or not reassembled at all. In his post-excavation notes, he mentions several cromlech built close together that are no longer visible today. As is evident at this site, and others I'll show on screen, even comparatively well-organised excavations often resulted in the stability of uprights and capstones being compromised, some requiring temporary structures, while others received permanent support. We've been looking into some of the sites he talks of, mostly around Pembrokeshire, and thanks to the availability of some historic OS maps matched up with Google Earth, we think that we've found some of these locations, so please subscribe to catch up with that in a future video when we try and answer the question of how many of our solitary dolmens were previously part of larger complexes of multiple structures. Like Guernanion and Corsa Gedol, this site would have also offered commanding views of the sea and coast. Archaeologists believe that they were erected between 3000 and 1900 BC and that the smaller chamber to the west was built first. This small cromlech features two portal stones, one of which has markings thought to be prehistoric rock art. The first mention of this rock art is from 1921 in a book titled The Ancient Monuments of Wales and Monmouthshire. The first entry simply describes the site, provides some pictures and comments on their traditional connection to Arthur. The second entry, although short, is an interesting one as it demonstrates two major problems faced by antiquarians of the time. Firstly, the phenomenon of Cromlech disappearing from the landscape in between reports, and secondly, the challenges they faced in simply identifying the correct monument and location using the inexact techniques of the time. This second entry is as follows. It is stated that at a meeting of the Archaeological Institute, a rubbing was shown exhibiting some linear indentations on the top of one of the supporting stones on the south side of the most western of the two cromlechs at Coid Ustum Gwern, Clan Voywe, near the road between Barmouth and Harlech. But in the discussions that ensued, the general opinion appeared to be that the marks were artificial. A difficulty arises in the identification of the particular cromlech above reference to. If stress is laid upon the proximity to Coid Ustrum Gwern, then the above site is the probable place intended. If nearness to Tlan is the chief factor, then one of the cromlechs at Dufferin must be intended. We are inclined to believe that they are referring to the Dufferin site in this entry, due to the location of the rock art in the description being consistent with later findings. But it took nearly 90 years to be rediscovered, so it is possible that there was once another site nearby with similarly placed rock art. In a study conducted in 2008, the authors George Nash and Adam Stanford recorded a series of faint grooved pecked lines and a number of small, regularly spaced notches on the northern face of the sudden upright of the western chamber at Dovrinar Dudwy. The rediscovery is one of a number of finds made by the authors in recent years in and around prominent Neolithic burial chambers in North Wales and Anglesey. The discovery of megalithic art at Dufferinar Dudwy was made by a chance visit in November 2007. The authors, using several low wattage lamps, explored both chambers in darkness hours and recognised several faint carved lines on the inside face of the southern upright within the entrance area of the western chamber. A second visit to the site was undertaken in January 2008 during darkness hours. The tracing undertaken in cramped conditions revealed a series of pecked motifs synonymous with the megalithic art tradition and included mainly rectilinear designs. Pecked on the western section of the face are two chevrons, the upper one pecked above a possible lozenge. Each of the lines of the chevrons converge to form an inverted V motif. 
under the title Chronological Implications. They explain chevrons, lozenges, and to some extent cupules form part of the megalithic repertoire of symbols and are usually associated with the passage grave tradition of northwestern Europe. However, it is clear that Dufferin or Dudwy does not have within its architecture any passage grave traits. Indeed, the morphology of the monument is clearly multi-phased, with its origins firmly embedded in the portal dolmen tradition of the early Neolithic. At some time during the latter part of the Neolithic, the users and builders of the monument embarked on an enlargement programme and constructed an eastern chamber, and incorporated both chambers into a large cairn mound. The rock art on the two uprights within the entrance area of the western chamber possibly indicates that at least the western chamber was in use during the latter part of the Neolithic. It is probable that the art was pecked onto the erected stones, rather than as part of the construction phase of the monument. TGE Powell also described the multi-phase construction after he excavated the site back in 1961. In his brief report, published shortly after, he stated that the blockwork supports were added to the larger capstone, but stopped short of giving any explanation as to why. He writes, The construction of the western chamber shows it to be of a type often called for convenience a portal dolmen. At the higher eastern end there is a pair of massive forward projecting stones with a high blocking stone between. These form a portal, although one that is blind or non-functional. The eastern chamber was much more ambitious in construction, especially in the width to be spanned and in the weight of the capstone that was raised into position. It was found necessary in 1961-62 to to provide additional support for this great roofing stone and a buttress was built on either side of the chamber for this purpose. The Neolithic pottery found in the pit is related to similar wares known from Pembrokeshire and Cornwall. It was not possible to obtain any material during the excavation suitable for radiocarbon measurement so that only a suggestion based on other evidence can be given about the date. The general structural characteristics of the eastern chamber and its trapezoidal cairn suggest a mixing of building practices owing something to the portal dolmen tradition, but more to influences coming by pastoral routes through the mountains from the Cotswolds and southeastern Wales. Although nobody knows what these sites were originally built for, there are many theories, and as always, we'd like to hear yours. Whether it's an additional vote for the tomb idea, astrological maps, places of worship to gods long forgotten, or something completely different, let us know in the comments down below. It was once fashionable to declare these sites as druidical altars and tables of human sacrifice, but this has since been deemed a myth or part of Roman propaganda against the druids. A few of you have commented that they were used in part of excarnation, a ritual still practiced in some cultures to this day, where the dead are left out rather than buried, so that the bones can be picked clean before being collected and either placed in a tomb or used in further rituals. There is some evidence of this at the giant's grave in Park Librios in Swansea, a site we covered in a previous video, where bones from tens of thousands of years apart were found in the same Neolithic structure. The older bones thought to have been collected from an excarnation site in Cathole Cave nearby. We'll be delving into this topic more in the future, but for now, thanks for watching, and an even bigger thank you to all of our subscribers. We'll see you soon.